Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. So uh, you're welcome to take a seat. We have a, a list of topics that we want to cover, so like just really um, impromptu here ad hoc, so you're free to sort of raise new topics and stuff. Um, so do you want to put yeah. the list of the topics that we sort of um, sure that you put together? All right. So these are the list of topics that uh, we think might be of interest. If you see something that's not there that you want to see up here, then please do uh, suggest. Um, otherwise, we can just pick up where some of the stuff were left off yesterday. And yeah, wanna... I was just going to say from, you know, unfortunately, the audio situation in the room isn't great. There's uh, for remote attendance, the only mic is literally the laptop. Um, so if you can come up to the front, if you're going to be saying anything, that would be very much, <laughs> very much appreciated. Yeah, I'm not going to throw the laptop around. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I just kind of put up a little summary of the topics that we did cover. Um, uh, I know Matthias and folks are going to be uh, heading out. So if we have any kind of tooling questions, those are probably important to get in early. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of open the floor for topics, anything maybe we didn't cover that people are interested in. There was some talk about, oh, there, okay, the energy aware stuff is at the end there. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Put the chat up. Yeah, Just, okay. If uh, anyone who's remote has any topics they want to add, uh, it might be easiest if you uh, comment in the chat, but uh, you can also try to speak, and we should hopefully be able to hear you, but it might be a little quiet. All right, the floor is open. <laughs> All right. Anything? Um, so, I guess maybe one one stupid question, but where does Cleek come from? <laughs> the name. You <laughs> said so, uh, to bother you about this afterwards. <laughs> okay. Um, so, if you work out yourself first. Um, Sorry. Work out yourself first. If what? Why don't you try to get first? Oh, I know. Sorry, I couldn't hear you with the mask. Okay. Sorry. What should I? Um, uh, K leaf. I don't know. It's a kernel leaf. No. Yeah, so where's the leaf from? Yes. Um, don't worry. I guess, I guess just the tail end of the dependency chain <laughs> for the kernels? I, I don't know. Want to, I just want to call a shotgun on, it's called Fleet. <laughs> <laughs> you guys started only. Did you want one of the table speakers? Yeah, that would be great. So, the other clock was canceled, so he had to take it. Phases the vision that you're using, and um, there, there is a kind of a I wrote a joke about that Bezos also just puts a car, B-A-S-I-S, double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Android uh, abbreviated as Rubble, that creates Rubble Thief, which is um, the project name for bringing the Android platform on uh, Bezos as well. And um, it's just um, that one simple word that you can perfectly match and Google for. And, um, So just make sure. Uh, click on the uh, click right here. Click on the little uh, on the speaker. There's a little uh, carrot. Oh, it's, yeah, right there. Click that just to make sure. Uh, there. Okay, so it's on the default. So everyone, hopefully they can hear. Yeah. Well. Hopefully the audio is improved now remotely. We'll see. Okay. Except for going All right. <laughs> Um, so items not covered, I guess one might be, this is my own little uh, thing, is uh, Ashman. <laughs> Getting rid of that. I don't know. Where is on it? <laughs> you want to, do you want to talk at all about Ashman? Um, it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> come on up. Come on up. That's a no. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, so um. Yeah, 
this MAVF B. So then they do not have access to enable any of the sys facts. This property, right. sorry. So that I think is going to have to be a one-time like build switch. So it's going to like we're not going to have it have to be able to have it per device. Um, the part that I think is interesting, and so Ashmem, just for context, I'm going to take this off for a second. Um, Ashmem was pulled out of staging. Um, there is infrastructure in AOSP to utilize MemFD instead. Um, the edge case that we had was that there are some devices where Ashman was in the NDK, so, or not some devices, some applications that directly access dev Ashman, and so it couldn't be deprecated at least in the official Android trees until the Play Store apps that use that are gone. Um, the one spot that wasn't really, I think, understood well was that just switching to MemFD doesn't actually avoid the issue um, for because we kind of were able to limit the apps that were actually accessing it directly. Um, the one edge case is that some applications though still have for memfds that they receive. So they don't actually touch dev ashmem, but they receive a file descriptor handle. And assuming it's an ashmem file descriptor, call an ioctal with an ashmem ioctal number. And so with memfd, that won't work. <laughs> and so that ends up crap breaking. Um, we had basically um, uh, uh, the, the web view was causing trouble for a while. Um, that case has been resolved. I think to make this properly you know, safe for you know, all legacy applications, um, even if they don't access dev ashmem directly, we're probably going to need to add a compatibility layer on memfd so that we'll handle the Ashmem IOCTLs and you know, basically do the right thing there. And so we're gonna have to have a little shim. Um, so it's basically uh, uh, emulating Ashmem driver, yes. which actually uses MemFDs. Right, and so, and this will be nice because there's other aspects that Ashmem has trouble with that I think would be nice with MemFD because there's things like, um, like with DMA buffs, one aspect that people wanna know is that when they have a file handle, to a DMA buff, and then they get another file handle. Sometimes it's to the same DMA buff, and so how do you tell that it's a unique, you know, unique or not? And, and one way you can do it is you use the inode number because the inode number is unique. Um, unfortunately, with Ashmem, the inode number is not unique because the shim file behind it is kind of hidden, and so um, moving to MemFD for th that is actually a nice benefit. But we're going to need to. You know, it's it's one of those things where I think there's still motivation to do this, um, but uh, getting the compatibility I think is going to be important. So, I don't know. Not dead yet, unfortunately. Have we actually measured how many apps do this kind of? Thing? Uh, Joel uh, Fernandez, I think, did uh, some measurements way back when. I don't know the details, but I know that there still are some. You know, um, some is fine, but probably doesn't like I, I don't think so. <laughs> I think you can. You okay. I mean, you maybe that's. Should, you shouldn't assume you can't. Okay. Well, I, I, I think the hard part is that uh, he was able to audit the applications that directly access Dev Ashman. And so there were SD policies that were added to make sure that applications weren't doing that with newer uh, API levels. Um, yeah, but. So you can have an SD policy for the, for the Ashman app tools to see if, see if they get many denials. Oh, no, you can have an audit. Okay, maybe that's a good approach. I mean, that's for one version, if you want just to see how yeah. bad it is. Okay, that actually might be a nice one because I, I didn't think about SC policy limiting on the actual IOCTO call, but that, that would. There's only to ignore it, by the way. Right. And then you can find out. Okay. Well, good. Yeah. <laughs> there's any hands on apps, and then we can just, you know, power and break them. Yeah. yeah. And for the most case, anything that's using like lib, uh, remember it's lib ash memory, there, there's, a, there's a helper library in the. Um, that's there. It already has the fallback support that's able to switch to, you know, using MemFD if it's proper. But the problem is in a case where applications are still mixed, where some think they're dealing with Ashman and some can handle. Well, it. Is there any me mechanism to notify the developers of the issue? Because I mean, that 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 and something. We, we 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 do not need to be. Oh my God, we can never break anything. No, I, I get that, right? But I mean, there's, so, I mean, because I've seen cases where developers will be notified that you know yeah. they're using this. Uh, 
library that's deprecated or this so other thing. So if, if you have an idea of the magnitude of the problem, if every single app in the world is using something. No, I guess this isn't the solution. I, but if it's a handful of apps, right. then go for it. Enjoy. I, and I, I suspect this will be the latter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was my little. <laughs> Anything else? Anybody else want to bring up? Um, are there like any, any openness to uh, the other dev boards in AOSP? Or is it this like too much scare right now? Uh, the question was Is there any openness to uh, adding additional dev boards to AOSP? Um, I don't know personally. <laughs> and so it's one of those things where I'm not sure if um, there's a strong appetite at this moment for it, but um, it's, I think, on a case-by-case -case situation. Um, what are you looking for? Uh, because with Android mainline, I mean, uh, if the board is supported mainline, it would not be difficult to add them, right? A simple question. Who's going to keep channel uh, compiled? With yeah. some changes. Yeah. We're, we're going to we're going to keep ASP being green. Uh, who is going to update channels? Who is going to uh, add house? Uh, there was some idea about generic house right, for such right. mm -hmm. uh, But again, somebody need to do this, and no team wants to pay for this. Yeah. Right? Because it's engineering time. You have to build a a library of aluminum devices to test them. At least at least a small part of the aluminum makes sense. Yeah. Well, well, I will only go he's not here to discuss it, but I think Sandeep was saying that you know there there probably is a need to sort of create a document that sort of says these are the requirements that you do want to be part of. I don't know if that's if that if went anywhere beyond just like the idea of being. I mean, I think it might be useful because it is a common question, and so I know even in the oops, sorry, um, you know, I, I know in prior life <laughs> there's aspects of like. Folks asking, like, oh, you know, I have this random dev board. How do we get it added as well? Sure. Um, and so I, 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 I think it's one of those, you know, probably having some process documentation, or at least here are the people to ask if you're trying to set up a relationship to to do this sort of thing. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think that the the aspect of support and making sure that it's, you know, the level of what's expected, I think, is really hard to figure out because the dev boards are obviously not form factor devices. They can't necessarily be tested at that level that form factor devices can be validated at. Um, and so that always makes it kind of in this little, little bit of a halfway zone where, well, this kind of broke and like, well, we can still test other stuff. So it's still sort of useful, but then it kind of degrades. Um, is there any documentation anywhere as to which dev boards currently in AOSP are tested? Yes, there, there's, um, well, no, I, mean, I don't know if it's tested, but there are the AOSP dev boards. So there's there's a page. Source Android has. Yeah, yeah. It, it, basically it's source.android.com, and then I think it's devices, or I can't remember exactly. It's like build okay. slash devices or something like that. But it's very, um, if you look for AOSP or something like this, you will find it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know the page. I, I just. Wonder how up to date it is. Um, it's current as far as yeah. the boards that are. Uh, I don't know. Supported yeah, is too I, strong I, of a word, but <laughs> sometimes I get bills. I use the last update we did was for the uh, vendor packets. Uh, yeah, and I mean, the, I think it's because it's right now there's. Because uh, I think it's RB5 of Dragon Board. Um, I'm not sure if Hiking 960 is still up there or not. No, it's, it is okay. Yeah, and then the um, uh, uh, Vim, Vim 3. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's the other problem is that board yeah. availability has always been a problem. So, yeah. yeah, so when I get questions about, yeah, what dev board should I use? I'm like, find yourself a pixel on eBay and go with that. That's kind of short. <laughs> I mean, it's stupid as it is. I mean, that's just the way, I mean, that's the easiest way. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it depends on your what you're trying to do. So I think for a lot of cases, that is the easiest path. Um, if, you know. That doesn't necessarily help if you're trying to do upstream development or anything like that, because then you're never, you're not going to be able to run a mainline kernel in, in sure. less, unless you're on, uh, you know. But these guys from Lenar apparently did that. Anybody <laughs> 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 thought about in Raspberry Pi portableless? Um, because it's pretty good support for Android on on on. Yeah, there's a number of folks who do have uh, Android working. I know there's uh, Glowdroid has a, a pretty good support for it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Consta, I can't remember who, somebody on Twitter who I follow, <laughs> um, who does uh, a, a, yeah. a proprietary build. Consta Yeah, that's right. Um, and 
so yeah, so there, there are different trees of that. Um, yeah, I guess so I, part of it is adding it into AOSB and having the, you know, dedicated support and the somebody who's going to chase up all the bugs and do the VTS testing and all of that. Um, I, you know, there's parts of it that I think that would be nice, but also, you know, it's the other part I think with the Raspberry Pi that gets difficult are things I think in the bootloader <coughs> because it doesn't have a very Android-ish bootloader. So you can get it to boot Android, but for things. You can chain boot into U boot and then into Android. And you have all the fast functionality. OK, so it has like fast boot? Yeah, yeah. So we'll, okay. we'll chain to U boot and then you can enable fast boot. Okay. And that's fast, you know, the things you want. Mm. Yeah, you have then a fully functional boot there. OK. Um. Oh, well, that's, that's why. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the edge case that I was always worried about before, trying to support a boot image and all of that, on yeah. the, that I assume would be difficult. Well, like I said, there was a document that sort of spelled out the requirements for, then, you know, some people, some teams on the yeah. internet who already do some <laughs> of this stuff might actually be able to sort of swap themselves through that sort of process. Yeah, I mean, the CTS and VTS test suite is, it's not really documentation, but it is the, you know, inherent yeah, but, spec. Well, there was another aspect that said, yeah, 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 most likely. Uh, I am not sure that any of AOSB projects allow external users to submit changes and accept them. No. Somebody generally should accept That's them. That's true. Yeah. And it's also legal issues. And mm -hmm. so Google should have, should have responsibility for this board, and it's a budget issue to some extent. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Maybe if enough people ask for it, but there will be budget for it. Well, I mean, if there was a way for, for, for people to easily sort of just, you know, create whatever, have some rules that say, okay, you can grab vanilla AOSP here, add this manifest line for your device, Fuller, and it will cleanly build out of the box, uh, that would already be a good start. Yes, mm -hmm. but for this, nobody needs Google's help, right? Uh, it's basically do themselves. Yeah, yeah, they pull a manifest, they add device uh, sure. something. That's what we do at the EU, actually, for a lot of customers. We just take um, yeah. a latest AOSP and put some projects on top of that one. Sure. And enable Android like that. But right now, it's like haphazard everywhere. I mean, if I'm looking for, you know, sort of like a central repo of all the board supported by. Yeah. Well, so we do have the AOSP, uh, or not the AOSP, uh, AOSP. and <laughs> give me the name. I'm, I've forgotten it already. AOSP and Oh, mainly. Well, it's there, but there's the um, the, the little GitHub project I set up. But yeah, the, it doesn't that, have the dirt board. It has it has the uh, right. I, I was talking. So I, I was talking about the there's the uh, GitHub thing I set up a while a, a, yeah, yeah. a year ago or so. But trying to create kind of an AOSP uh, external community. Um, so for dev work happens. So let me really quickly find that because it would be useful to have the URL. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm knocking things off here. It's one of those, my, my memory for specific URLs is really bad, so um, let me see. Oh, yes, here we are. AOSP developers community. So uh, there's a link somewhere to the page, I thought. Pop it up. One yeah. issue usually that happens with community supported um, devices is the ability to keep it uh, going. Mm -hmm. When I say, I mean, especially keep it current with the stream master changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's, that's what Dimitri is trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. So if nobody's responsible for it then. Yeah. yeah. So it will be if it's a community um, um, effort, then there has to be some community testing effort as well. Yeah. 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 At Linaro, I think we keep finding the ABI packages, but that's only because we are interested. In the so this, that's the URL, the AOSP developers um, It's it's just a GitHub page. It's really simple. It links to an IRC <laughs> channel. So if you join in and have things to add, um, really open with adding projects. So. Links so to different projects that are out there. How active is that IRC? 
it's minorly people are chatting about once a week there's a little question on something um and so the idea is just trying to like pool the folks who are doing similar community yeah. aosp focused work because everybody hits the same problems um to the support not being on the street? Is it related to, like, for example, out of tree drivers? Or is it related to AOC system? No. I think at present, working mostly uh, uh, you know, CE or uh, ABM is on I think you know about a couple of them. But other than that, regular testability is quite But like those ABI breakages, are they, what is like breaking as far as, like are they coming from up uh, many times it happens after an LPS merge. So, LPS merges. We don't do vendor module testing as much. So, it's not part of three modules on those things. It's something seems upstream. Maybe I broke, but it was only relevant for these dead words, and that didn't get tested. I mean, like the API breaking, the API breaking that you know, causing issues because. Under modules, if under module is up, if driver is upstream, then uh, it should be fixed up. Look, so we see the breakages on LTS, not on Android. Oh, I see. Yeah. But LTS printer should break the API. It shouldn't, yeah. but I think uh, the gap is that for some of these devices, we are able to use testing. Oh, I see. So there's no symbol. So what you need to do is add a so symbol yeah. list to AOSP, yeah. and then we will um, keep the, the AOSP stable. Because we have AOSP monitoring yes, stable. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. Sure. If you don't tell us it should be stable, we can take it. The TS is contributing to that. So it's not a, I mean, it's not a complaint. It's just an observation yeah. that we catch these issues because we are the only ones testing them. We, we do for the boards that are supported in the Android sheets. So those those have symbol lists. Um, but occasionally still changes come in from yeah, the stream that's occasional. Yeah. We have symbol lists are already there, but it's uh, <laughs> it's a changing symbol list. Like, is because like, I mean, if, if you provide pseudo this, it would be not the same as breakage anymore. Right. That's the test. There is a breakage. Like, like, there's a breakage that is that you really don't. It's just going to be breakage yeah. devices if you want. For us, I think no. it gets caught during the CI testing. Do we know? Yeah. Part of the state. Yeah. The problem also is because most of the changes that you've seen have come via LTS side. So because of LTS patch that were pulled in, that were not in. I mean, the weak looking at all minor API differences. A lot of times we can just say we don't need that patch because it's not relevant for Android. You should rewrote that patch. Okay. Other times we have to, like, it's a security issue, so what version says it's a different CRC, but you can say it's a safe API change, so we just like set both versions up, and uh, at some point we need to get some data structure back as it as it clear, yeah. or we meet up on our padding, or but we have different mechanisms. So far we did not have to break because we did not find another solution. But um, limiting the surface helps us to only keep things like only have to work on things that are actually yeah. interesting. I think what we will try to do is I'll chat up with you and figure out how we can do for drivers that we don't change and just that's relevant. We're well documented, um, fairly well documented how to create symbolists and as a tool, basically, you keep the modules, the kernel, and it spills you out the symbolist to submit the stuff to you and then it's done. That's what we end up doing. Yeah. I think there may be a little quirk where for boards like the DB845 on the newer kernels, that has a symbol list. But for 
like the Heike 960 that isn't in the newer kernels, <laughs> but other folks are keeping that running externally. Yeah. There's not the symbol list for that, I think, at that point. And so you may see those breakages without the symbol list. Um, at the moment, I think we're not doing any <laughs> okay, I thought you know, I can just still doing something with some of the newer kernels. So there is the, uh, there is the signing history. Oh, yeah. Okay. But that would hit that sort of issue where the 845 or the other it works. Does, so most of the times we ended up, end up signing. When you um, do your testing, do you use dry food images? Oh, uh, yes. yes. In that case, it that means that you're only allowed to use, because we trim those um, kernels, you're only allowed to use symbols that are on, that are supported and listed in the symbol list. I think you have to, you have to use at least in yeah. a blue display. So I think those are the patches that you have to I'm wondering then you how you get in game right to make sure you have your symbol no, we don't remove symbols. No, but so how do you? I'm just curious so how you get rid So LTS patches sometimes add um, changes. Never question that ends up using a new symbol that's okay. already there in the kernel but not part of the symbol. Or there's a new mid function that gets added that is now called yeah. directly instead of mm -hmm. you know, and so it's. Okay. Uh, Sometimes. And it's just not the kernel breakage. So there was any testing there for the USB regression for them. Mm -hmm. So, for example, something has changed in the core framework and it's not being tested on, or we have not tested. Or we were just, yeah, just not aware about You were not aware about that. Yeah, we did those too. And you also do uh, mainline upstream uh, based yeah, on testing. That helps. Any other topics? Well, one topic has not been discussed in a while is uh, boot time. Uh, <laughs> this actually comes back from our discussion with customers all the time. It's like this thing is horrible to boot, and they're trying to find a way to make it faster. And I propose a number of hacks, <laughs> um, sort of, which generally fall into two categories. Uh, sort of, you know, so I know some people have put the containerization, so I'll containerize this or that, and sort of try to boot it. And the other one is uh, try to suspend to flash or boot from flash. Those kind of are the two things that sort of come back. And I was just, you know, wondering what other people have experimented or what, what things have been looked at to make it sort of boot faster. Because I mean, right now, on a, you know, on a mid low range. Of Device, power device, it might take you know, a, a minute or a minute and a half to boot, uh, or, which is you know, pretty horrendous for a consumer device. Um, and again, so just use cases can be totally random uh, automotive, you know, medical device, what have you, uh, whatever it is. And I know Chris sort of also probably has a similar discussion with that. Yeah, I, I do a lot of work with automotive people, and they, the first question always comes up is how do we get it to boot in two seconds? Which my answer is, sit back, relax, it's impossible. <laughs> get, on, get on with the rest of life. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in the automotive business, what I've seen is people will actually sort of sideline angles. Like, okay, screw this, it can't do it, I'll just do it some other way. Yeah. Um, because they have, a, uh, you know, as, as, as many people know, they have a regulatory required display camera, rear view yeah. camera in two seconds. So they'll just shove air on the side, get the something. Like when you ask Android to do it in two seconds, right. I mean, we get those requests occasionally. It's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's too ridiculous. Yeah, no, I get that. <laughs> no, we get that. To be honest, it's not ridiculous. It's just not ridiculous. Current OS to that point is, mm -hmm. it's too big a, it's, you know, it's too big a gap to. I mean, how, how much is the big one? How much is the big one? All of them are way more than two seconds. You can so this is this is this thing called EBS, the external external view system for the cameras. So you have to display that. You have to get that daemon up and running in two seconds from from power on, and that is possible. So you've got basically uh, about a second for the bootloader and about a second for the kernel, and then you 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 start that daemon, and, and that works. That that's that's certified. There's there's cars in the in the in the world 
that do that. But then you start booting Android, and then it takes like 20 seconds or 30 seconds to rip up the framework because of the crazy way it's coded. Um, and there isn't and also the, the exposure, I mean, the overall surface is so large as is needed by the use case you're talking about is only a specific use case of yeah, have yeah. the camera up, have the screen up, show. And it's but it's, it's not just the camera. So also audio would be great. I really need early audio so you can play back various things and, and whatever. But the audio doesn't come up until the framework's out, which is like 30 seconds later, so you can't do audio through, through oh. uh, safety critical audio through Android. I can give a little bit of context. We did like some of this analysis, right, which was a lower end chip, and our boot time was eight seconds oh. um, for production. It's from one to one. Uh, one screen. So um, you should be able to um, um, probably from when you jump to the kernel. Yeah, so you have to uh, but the bootloader is not more than a second. Oh, that's, that's usually uh, many seconds or hundreds of And we found that a lot of the optimizations were kernel module specific. Analyze like how long it takes to load the kernel module, how long it takes to uh, decompress your RAM disk. Algorithm you're using to build before the GTIF. In my experience, the problem is the framework. Yeah, so I, one of the things I've always wondered is Zygote always does the exact same thing on boot up. So I was just wondering how much would you just, you know, boot it up on build time, you know, freeze the process image and just load the process image in immediately from disk. So instead of actually Zygo loading all these classes every single time, doing the whole thing from scratch. And it, could so, yeah. <laughs> it could be Emacs. It could be Emacs. Same thing with some of the framework system services. I mean, a lot of these are just, again, reinitializing the same old thing every over and over, before they talk to anything on the kernel side, right? So, I mean, if these things could be sort of frozen into container, frozen image, whatever it is, you know, and so, just load this thing into random. Yeah, so sort of like that. I mean, because kernel optimization, kernel boot optimization, there are like dozens of talks over the years on ELC, ELC about these things. Um, Bootloader also, boot time have been discussed at Nosium, uh, at, you know, but the, the Android side just, there doesn't seem to be anything. I mean, I've looked at, I've, I've put it myself in like in a background task, you know, eventually, uh, if I'd like to sit down on the Zygote and see if I can sort of find a checkpoint location where I can just put myself some breakpoint and then just increase the process and just start over, but I've never, Done it myself, but it's got to be doable. I mean, because the Zygote does exactly the same thing. I don't need to. They investigated Android Nation Nation for Android Auto, especially, mm -hmm. because they were the main user. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was done something about this, right? Mm -hmm. Three years ago, it was an investigation how to add the Hibernation Nation to Android. So, indeed, first time it was still good for, for a new network. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. But, but then you can do it on an OTA, right? So you do the OTA, you um, just suspend the flash, and then you reboot from the same thing. Yeah, the problem is that it will increase your definitely your your storage uh, size by sure. try around, yeah. and it should be reliable storage. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah agree, agree. But I think people might be actually willing to pay for that, right? See if they can get the boot time mm. in a reasonable fashion. Sure. Yeah. And that, 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 I mean, this is a big issue. But the for anything, it's not a smartphone, basically. Which they are relevant to the other case, I think, is the PII leakage to the so how serious they are, but that needs to be considered. I mean you have to understand them putting on memory, which probably adds you know, as much as the whole boot. Say, I think the problem is once you've done all these things, then, then you, you read the image back from memory and put it in the right place, and maybe decrypt it, and maybe you know, maybe uh, decompress it. By the time you've done all that, it's you might as well have just done a copy. You've not saved that much time. But doing it, uh, I'm interested that uh, your your your, uh, your comment about doing it in in eight seconds on a Pixel Five. Yeah, there's an article, probably like a Verge article. Kind of That's in, yeah, that's, that's, in, in general, I feel like on recent pixels, it's pretty fast. It's yeah, not It's really not as long as it used to be. They're always trying to improve it. Like, we're not allowed to make any changes that um, digress or regress.
Sort of, you know, the, the actual sequence hasn't really changed. It's all the same thing. Right? Yeah, zygote has to start before anything else starts, and then once the zygote starts, the parents start starting, and then that takes forever. There, there has been improvements. I don't know when, but I know like the my team is very now. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, I know also Saravana's talk yesterday was highlighting trying to get some of the parallel module loading going on. Sure. And that definitely is a factor in improving boot time. So. That's only going to save you. Like, I mean, yes, it's 500 milliseconds. That's right. No, right. Uh, the, I mean, the, the Zygote was like thousands and thousands of classes that have to be initialized. Uh, that's just, you know, that's just every single book. And more uh, questions. Yeah, oh. I mean, it, it's reminiscent of, okay. of uh, like an embedded <laughs> Linux world. Uh, when people started hacking Linux kernel and trying to boot boot fast, one of the things they got rid of is the is the, uh, the actual programming or whatever the actual calculation of the you know, the, the speed of the processor. It's like okay, well we, we know how much we do the same math every single time we boot. We just might just pass it as a boot parameter, um, and that's kind of like you know in the similar territory, right? Yeah. yeah. Anything you recalculate is a good thing. I'm checking there's the They do to this. They do have hibernation, and they apparently they call it um, they call it suspended disk. Okay. They do have, but they have well, they have extension of Android. It's not pure ASP. It's they have special halts. They have special way to do yeah, this, yeah. and they pro probably did this only for Qualcomm or C or something. So that was actually so I saw the actual uh, content on source.android.com reference to suspend to disk, but I wasn't able to find the sources in the AOSP. Is that Beyond is, is like is that I mean, I think it's auto auto part because they but it's all part of ASP though. Hmm? It's all the same thing though. It's all the same. Um, it's, well, it's it's visible to for users to read because I use the source entry, but okay. I don't know if source so is right. available. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you need to be auto vendor to get it. To get it. Right. Right. No, I'm not working for Android auto. Okay, okay. Because yeah. I did see the reference on source that I account, but I didn't find the code. But maybe I was just like looking in the right place, but. Um, I, I, I likewise have not seen it. I don't think it's in the public repositories, is my feeling. Uh, I'll go to a check. Let me just. Uh, sure. That, that would be really interesting. Yeah. My, my customer. Does anybody have any work with the incredibly low latency SLCs um, just running straight out of the box? Uh, no, we're not trying that. I mean, they may be too expensive for, for a lot of these applications, but. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked by what they've actually accomplished. Right, but the, uh, in the automotive industry, they tend to have requirements for storage, which are de different. Um, they have the, the heat stuff and uh, reliability over the years, and so I don't know if that if they're using that or not. I well, the, the SLCs are really not deep. That's not a big issue for them. It's cost. I mean, okay. Okay. They're, they're just really expensive. Gotcha. If you buy something good. Yep. Right. Yeah. Automotive is a very cost sensitive market. Yeah, know, yeah. Even though your vehicle costs multiple tens of thousands of dollars, yeah. they'll still have a couple each, just say, shave a couple of dollars of the cost of the CPU. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah, so, so like, they will not have, you know, necessarily the most, the fastest SOC out there. Um, the other thing is it just may, may change over years as the price goes down on these things. Sure, right? sure. Can I maybe bring up a, 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 a an issue, well, an issue, a, 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 a topic, which, I, which John has just uh, touched on, really, and that's the uh, the community thing and the ASP developers thing. Is there any appetite for some kind of community behind ASP? This is a thing that, that, that interests me a lot because uh, that's, that's where I live. I know you guys all work for Google, so you have your own community. <laughs> but what about the rest of us? How, how do we? How do we? Well, I think Lenaro is in that unique space where it's 
work with Google, but we are also very, very focused with a lot of developers. I'm thinking more, more about ways to get people yes. together to yeah, right. mail this, the, um, the, the developers' uh, charts and such like yeah. that. Yeah. Is, is there any other time for, to, to do more of that kind of stuff? Um, so and if so, what will we do? We have, we have an Android uh, SIG in the 5, and you know, we've done you know, Android 12 ports through Alibaba and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so we are building a community, and we are working together. Mm -hmm. um, so it is happening in various quarters uh, for very specific reasons, obviously. <laughs> I thought they would borrow a joint. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm going all the time, so I... Yeah, I was yeah, thinking of something not specific, but more general. Just, right, I'm, yeah. 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 I mean, and, 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 you know, they they would love that. I mean, I know the SIG would love that if there was something broader hmm. that, hmm. that they could just feed into it. I, I, I know hundreds of other people who would love that as well. I can we can talk offline. I mean, we certainly can host it um, if somebody's interested. So we host other things that are not risk five. Um, I mean, they just can't have boats or anything like that. But mm -hmm. um, I can hook you up with, with, with some of those people who are driving those things. When, okay. when I was setting up the GitHub page um, for the OSP yeah. community page, um, it was kind of in that intention of trying to say, okay, there's all these different folks who are doing very similar work mm -hmm. and it would be useful to have some more collaboration that's going on there because you know there's just too much overlap in a lot of cases um we don't have a mailing list there um, i think that became just a like where are we going to host this <laughs> you know kind of problem um and so i didn't i didn't want to put it on the Monaro side or you know specifically to seem like it was too affiliated with anyone um but uh yeah, so if there's suggestions for kind of a neutral place to host the mailing list, that's fine. The IRC channel is already public and up there. Um, we're, we're hosting like a, a, a general overlay SIG right now because there's no uh, standard for overlays. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we let them use our mailing lists and stuff like that. So okay. we're happy to do that. Yeah. I mean, that might work. Um, but yeah, but I mean, so yeah, it's one of those things. Let, let folks know and we'll put it up on that page and try to, you know, have some central place to at least direct people to the work that's going on. Um, I know there's over the years, and I know recently there was kind of talks of like, is there some way that we could get like a big manifest that would have all the dev boards? Um, but I think that gets to be kind of ambitious because there will be little collisions and making changes that doesn't break, you know, you don't want to break one device by making a change here where it's like, oh, we're moving to the new version of. You know, the hardware composer or something like that, but that's going to cause some other board to break. It. So I, I think having still the separate projects that are kind of focusing on their own little zone oh, is sure. still useful, but I think a lot of the technologies can be the same. And, you know, in the spots, I think the hard part sometimes is for external projects um, that don't have an internal user it's kind of hard sometimes to pull stuff into AOSP proper. Um, and so those may still need to live externally, but I, I, as long as they can get on a you know GitHub or uh, free desktop or, or, or whichever project to host, um, I think, you know, just making sure people are familiar with the components, I think will be good. What would next steps be there if you wanted to? Well, so we already have the page. I, I was showing it earlier. I don't know if um, it was. I mean, there's there. always been the actual, you know, mailing list that Google hosts, you know, annual boarding, annual platform, and this and that. Yeah. But, you know, um, and, and there are actually people from the Google team that will actually respond yeah. to questions from time to time. Um, it's just, you know, I've not seen actual sort of. Spirits are built around this. I guess uh, there are people on these things. From the Android team, if you sort of close that. Sometimes I think about one in ten messages gets answered. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. One in eight. I mean, it takes a you know somebody who drives things to ground, right? So, like, 
terrorism group or something that just make sure that questions get answered. Otherwise, exactly that happens. I mean, I, I, I compare this with, say, the Octo project mail list, yeah. which has like 10 messages a day, and every single one of those answered within 24 hours. Yeah. Right, but yeah. I, I don't think you can make that comparison there. Because, like, you know, the UP works as custom. Yeah, the, the open source community around Android is of not the same nature as the rest of the open source communities around the open source in general. Right. Yeah. I think there was a uh, there was a, a, a conference around 2008 9 where uh, Andy Rubin was on stage and he was asked about open source and he made this distinction that's just stuck in my mind. He said, you know, open source is two things: it's a community given process and licenses. He said, we're very strong on licensing, not so much on the community thing. I mean, that's his words, right? So something like that. So that's sort of uh, to whether we like it or not, it still remains a, a process where key decisions are taken uh, by Google for reasons, which we all understand, I think, um, and they're not necessarily kind of done in public, whereas if you go to the current mailing list, you can actually have a discussion with the person that merged yeah. the patch yeah. Yeah. and sort of push back on that. That's just never going to happen on the USB. Yeah, but so, I mean, Google is Google. I'm, I'm fine with that. But can we build um, a moat around Google <laughs> and build our own community <laughs> that, that, That's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, by I, the way, Yako didn't really Become this responsive thing until we both stepped in and, and absolutely and created yes. some really senior developers and told them they're going to go dry, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, Yocto is, yeah, it's not pure community and in, in that it is sponsored and has been by uh, by Intel, especially, but also Lenaro and, and many others. So, you know, it, it doesn't come out of thin air. Community right. has to be. Be bought and uh, it has to be paid for it at some point or other. Well, and if somebody doesn't want to drive, it doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I you have lots of things that die on the line because the members don't. I, I, I totally agree. Not, obviously, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a limit as how much you could do as you yeah. know, kind of private individuals, as I'm kind of thinking. Right, but you know, without being cynical, I just don't understand how you can actually drive something if you're not the actual main developer. And that's what I'm saying. So, uh, you know. I mean, I think there's enough aspects of people who are using this source to do things and to solve. Their own problems, and sure. in a lot of the times, it's sort of done just individually, in those you know small companies or small organizations. Yeah, sure. And so I think there still is a lot of benefit to at least having a sense of community and knowing that you can reach across and ask questions and you know see if other people are seeing those problems. And so I, I, I personally, you know, think that is a very useful thing. Um, so. So I, I see week after week as I go into, in, into different companies, they have exactly the same problems. They have teams of hundreds of engineers doing exactly the same thing as the other company. And you kind of think, there is some commonality here, which is non-competitive. Just basic competence as to how the hell does this thing build, or what does this error mean, or what do we do in this case? You know, what, what, are the, what, are the, what are the common ways of solving this kind of problem? How do we implement a new how? You know, all the, all the general stuff, and there isn't really a place where people can come together and say, hey, I did this thing, this, this is a cool thing, you, you can do this the same way as me, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Join the RC channel. I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want to invite people into that, because I think that would be great. Yeah. The, 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 I think the other part that does get difficult with uh, the Android space is that there are a lot of different targets. And so folks are at different stages where they may be, you know, like, oh, we're working on getting a device up with Android 12 right now. And then other folks will be like, oh, no, we're, you know, cutting edge, we're doing Android 13 now. And then there's other folks who are like, no, 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 we're at AOSP. And like, yeah. like Lodroid even is like, you know, pulling down the master branches for or the main branches for all the other projects um, that it used. It, it, so it's, it's even further out. Um, and so it's one of those things where, um, Kind of being ahead of AOSP and adding OSP at the last release, um, that splits the focus, I think, a little bit, where folks have a hard time, you know, kind of having a, 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 a kind of a central sense of things. Um, yeah, I, I think you're saying there are no simple answers. Yeah, but I mean, I think that makes it more difficult, but I don't think that makes it impossible. Like, I think people still can get together and have a sense of being able to share some of that information. Well, maybe. But, uh, yeah. But, yeah. If you have any suggestions, I definitely I'm happy. The, the little the GitHub project is one of those that'll yeah. you can push a uh, I don't know what the GitHub term means, but whatever. Do do the pull request or whatever that's required. And, yeah. Anything else? Thank you.
pay Libra is too. Well, do you have any update on the B4L, the 4L2 stuff? <laughs> That's what I ask you about every year. It's um, still, still broken. So, I, I, so before I made my transition, uh, I, I basically pushed out some patches and uh, hadn't gotten any review for a while. And um, sometime in the fog of my transition over, I did get some review feedback. Um, so there are some actions that I need to take to, you know, change the patches that I've got. Um, I just have not had any bandwidth to do so. So if anybody is interested in picking up that, that is uh, uh, open at the moment. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's still something I've been eager to see working in a, a reliable way on a number of different platforms. It would be nice to see, yeah. have it really be a, a, a how that you can just drop in and has a standard interface. It's not. Yeah, maybe that's a, it's actually kind of a good example of one of these disconnects between what Google's doing internally and what people in the community are doing because like they'll test it on Cuttlefish or some emulator which doesn't represent well what actual hardware does mm. and to like internally it's kind of considered done and shippable but outside it doesn't actually work on hardware. I don't know if it's used on Cuttlefish. Um, I don't know what the emulator is. I don't. I don't know how it's tested internally. I so guess part of I think the part of the aspect is I think the V four L two codec two HAL is a Chrome OS yeah, thing. And so it's, yeah. it's. I don't know if it actually has a target internally, hmm. um, at least on the Android side. Um, and so that's part of the reason why I think yeah. that there's been such difficulty with it. But I think, you know, definitely I'm I'm I'm, I'm very eager to see it working okay. and right. having it be a useful generic HAL. Yeah, it has its own. Uh, so this is for the V4L2 Codec 2 HAL, yeah, okay. um, which is sort of a, it's, it, it's, I believe comes over from the Chrome OS team and it doesn't have a internal Android user, but it's in the AOSP tree. Um, and so it, it, it's, yeah, getting it to work on devices is difficult at the moment. So, um, so it's not just a drop in, but there's been other things. I know like the, the webcam HAL is functional these days. And I know that was something that took a long time to get to the point where it's like, okay, like web cameras can just work and that, that, that's a generic HAL now. I, in terms of like what else are we working on, I think we're in a similar position to what Chris was trying to summarize. Like where people people ask us, can you can you help us get AOSP? Like and well, what does that mean? Does that mean it's actually fully supported by Google? Does that mean we have the blessed manifest plus our own hacks? Like mm -hmm. it, it's not even clear what having AOSP means for a device. And because it means like you said, it means multiple different things depending <laughs> on what targets you're aiming at. So um, I think, like Chris just, I think summarized things really well. Like we just that kind of what it means to have AOSP as a community is just a really vague. But if we could you know, around what mm -hmm. that actually means and sharing of problems and stuff. Yeah, no, I, I think I think we're both working with people who are not in the in the smartphone industry, but right. using AOSP for all kinds of other. Yeah, crazy stuff. Um, so, yeah, these people need help. Yeah. Uh, curiosity, um, are there any howls that folks are finding difficult to get going or? I'm not sure it's a howl problem. So. I mean, some, sometimes it's like, it, you know, are the are, are folks who are doing this mostly getting howls just from, you know, whatever SSC vendors? Like, are those coming in as kind of proprietary things? Are they coming in as generic things? Like, I'm kind of curious as far as where people see a lot of the effort in those bring-ups? I mean, all, all of those, really. Okay. Um, so some people are getting that pretty much off the shelf. Get bored from somewhere in China or Taiwan, for example, uh, which comes with some, some kind of uh, ASP, BSP, and then you want to build that into a, a door entry system or a, 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 a medical testing system or whatever else, a pizza, pizza, a pizza ovens running for an Android, by the way. Um, and so there are various levels of, of, of competence. Some people just kind of want something that, that 
LinkedIn. Other people want to hack around a little bit. Some people like me can come from a, an embedded Linux background, so they want to do all their embedded Linux hacks in there as well. So it, it's a whole spectrum. You can't really say it's this or that. It, it's the whole thing. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's fine. I was, I, was, I, was, I was more curious if there were any pain points that people were seeing in common that. Uh... No, I think what's in common is they have most people don't have a, a party to turn to for reference and for troubleshooting and mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's really where people sort of, you know, I understood, you know, Google's got the partners that they work with that have sort of close tie in to them. But, you know, aside from that, it's like the desert. You know, that's that's what I see. Most of the customers we work with is they just don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. That, that's exactly the point. Yeah. So yeah, we, I mean, we you can you can we can sort of create a community of other people in the desert, but still, <laughs> we're in the desert. Right? That's the problem. We're still gonna be thirsty. Yeah, yeah. we're still sort of, yeah. That's that's the problem. Um, and we'll I, be thirsty that, together. Yeah, obviously, the, the 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 use cases we're looking at are of no interest to Google themselves because these are not these are not uh, sure. uh, supported uh, use cases. There's no revenue for Google here. Fine. But it's open source. We own the open, well, the, open the, the community owns the open source. So we want to do stuff with it. And our customers in particular want to do stuff with it. So that, that, that's the kind of thing I'm coming through. Yeah. And we um, I don't we're not looking for magic answers or anything, it's just you know, can we kind of pull resources in some way? Can we put something together where we can say, well, you know, here's one way to solve that problem, or here's here's a I think I, I found out which uh, which which was which was a neat idea. You know, here's a neat way to get things to boot in eight seconds. Uh, that kind of stuff would be useful to to document and have centrally available to to people. You know, just just to help each other. There is a small beginning with the IRC channel. I mean, uh, some folks from here from the NAR who have posted very helpful things, which so. Communicating in the open is, is one good first step. Of course, writing them down on a documentation page is better, but starting by communicating in external channels is really a first good step. Yeah, we should evangelize that. What? Actually, it's a lot of Android team that I've never heard of. It's Pound uh, AOSP developers. Is it? Where is it? Where do I find it? It's on OFTC. Um, so, and, and that website that I was talking about, the GitHub will link to it. So, um, but yeah, this is, it's, it was trying to create kind of a neutral space where people could have that conversation. So. I'm, I'm C Simmons. I'm about uh, a third of the way down. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. I, I have so, a it's a small group right now. <laughs> There's also a Reddit. Somebody has a subreddit uh, associated with uh, uh, Tom AOSP. Okay. Uh, but it seems, I haven't actually pursued that at all, but it seems long rather quiet. <laughs> so that may be another yeah. bunch we could reach out to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the discussion was, was as, it, uh, as I saw it, was, you know, it, was, it was really interesting and sensible stuff. Yeah, where is it? <laughs> Just because it's on Reddit doesn't mean it has to be great. <laughs> <laughs> So long as it has stock recommendations, I'll always. <laughs> 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 no, yeah. frankly, I mean, uh, sometimes I've Googled for yeah, stuff and found uh, you know, articles in Mandarin, and I've just you know plugged those into Google Translate. Yep, yep. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing, but he seems to know what he's doing. <laughs> it's um, one of the things I, I feel like was. Lenaro, there's been kind of a long-term effort over time on this idea of trying to find areas where we could create generic house. And so I know Rob Herring started this years and years ago. Um, but that's one area where it's like, as long as there is a set of house that focus on the what the upstream kernel does, like interfaces, that could simplify a lot of the time because I feel like there is, in order to bring up Android on any BSP, Writing howls and getting them going is a fair amount of work, especially if you're trying to start from scratch. And so, so much, so many of those things end up being copy pasted from, you know, whatever AOSP devices are, are up there. 
and tweaks, but I think being able to create those generic frameworks um, would help kind of lower the cost for external folks to be able to kind of start off with things. And so that's one of the things where I think would be interesting. I, you know, it, it never seemed to get as much traction over the years. Yeah, and the, so, thing is, the thing is, I think it, it is, I, I see it more, more, more being relevant to people who are actually working as soft silicon vendors. Um, whereas an actual OEM is kind of like already swimming in so much stuff, like the house. Yes. They're going to get to the house, right? But at that point, they're using the reference board with the yeah. DSP came, coming from the silicon vendor as a starting point. Yeah. Um, and then they'll have somebody in the team that will sort of take care of this house or that house or something like that. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think that also makes it so that some vendors have the bandwidth to do that. Yeah. And some sure. may not. Some, some so, not. Sure. Um, Exactly. Sometimes uh, you don't want even to see the code because it's so scary. <laughs> uh, and technically, for development work, you go to home screen, yeah. you need very few files. Exactly. You, audio, you, you cannot do it without something. It will, and it will crash and will not go to home screen. But there, there are very few, like uh, Surface Player uh, uh, yeah. audio for sure. Yeah. Um, maybe yeah. Good things that uh, depends on your boot scheme. Okay, you need an HLE composer or HAL. Yeah, so it's GL um, and hardware composer. Yeah, and, the, those, yeah. the, the surface plane will go nowhere without that. Yeah. Um, you will definitely just need to. Uh, for video, and yes. <coughs> uh, there's a software implementation. Mostly that's it. Well, other things you can just go generic and it will yeah. boot to home screen. Sure. Yeah, you can give you some functionality, but at least you will get the picture. Um, I've got a list somewhere. There's about eight. Oh, it's a few. Uh, but the, the main ones are, are the are the the video house and the audio house. Yeah. Once you've got that working, uh, those ones will get you all the system services up. Yeah. Um, yeah. You'll you'll be able to get a home screen sometime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There is actually a generic open source one called Tiny Hall. Yes. Which is. I mean, if, used quite widely, I think. Yeah. If you take a set of cutoff issues, is you can even boot it without an actual GPU um, so yeah. acceleration or anything like that. You go switch to your mini GB and that's it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, and that, I think the cuttlefish is a great reference for a lot of that because yeah. that is tested at like, you know, phone levels. I, I, <laughs> if you want to <laughs> comment. <laughs> Just as far as the, the amount of validation that goes on a cuttlefish and the number of hows that it, the support that it has is able to, I believe, be validated at, you know, like phone levels. That's the main. How, how, much, is, how much testing is done on, on actual hardware? So I, I know cuttlefish is, is, is tested continuously, but there, there, are, there must be hardware farms as well. We test on pixels and such like. I know Lenaro helps with all the dev works. Mm -hmm. So on the Lenaro side, we do GB at 45C, RB5, and uh, some combinations, so not everything gets tested. Like uh, GB at 45C and RB5 are tested in 5 core. Like, yeah, I think in 6 we have. I think the hard part on those is that on those dev boards, the house support is on that kind of more minimal set yeah. of mm -hmm. just to get it kind of to the point where it's yeah. you know booting and sort of usable. Um, and so to run a full CTS and BTS test, there's a lot of stuff that's not going to work because you don't have a touch screen, don't have you know fingerprints, don't have all these other you know details. Um, I'm asking you looking for because it's a little bit of confidentiality. We do test our phones physically, obviously. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 we wear all the tests on our phones regularly. Uh, yeah. I can say that we're testing uh, Android Mainline, Android, which all our LPS kernels uh, yeah. since the Pixel 6, on Pixel 6. There, we have the only issue, it's not the Pixels I'm really interested in. Well, uh, I, 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 I was going to say that a lot of hows, if you worry about hows, yeah. are Pixel specific. Uh, uh, so yeah. you worry about. What were you asking about testing on non pixel versions? Yes. Actually, I genuinely don't know the answer to that. Yeah. <laughs> but would that even help the hows that you're using? Because those would be. Um, well, that's fine. 
That's tricky. I mean, so so again, coming at it from from my point of view, which is which is really the embedded point of view, um, it's great to have a reference. So say Vim three or or um, board or whatever for the high nine sixty whatever. It's great to have a reference. Say like well, this is how it should work. Um, and then I can then look at compare that to to my how which I'm kind of hacking around on and which I've got some some minimal support from this silicon vendor. Maybe 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 it's good support. It depends on the silicon vendors. I mean, NXP for example do do the screens. Um, and then you kind of you know you, you compare it with the drafting and then the board you're you're working with has got some weird peripherals plugged in which you have to write your own house for for I know, some audio. So you know you you kind of mixing and matching a whole bunch of things, but it's good to say, look, this should work. If I get this board and if I build the AOSP for that board, it should work. Uh, and if my board, if the if the equivalent function on my board doesn't work, then I can see how it was meant to work. I can see a, a good example of how a house should work, and then I can well, basically copy and paste that. If I'm honest, that's what I'm really looking for. But just just some some confidence that I'm doing the right kind of thing, and then I'm not just going off in entirely the wrong direction. Yeah, honestly, the way I usually recommend is if you just look at how to set up the pixels. Yeah, that's 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 okay. just the references for me. It's like okay, is it how is it done for the actual official pixel that came out with that version of Android? That's the way that you should look at doing it. I I'm so, use the Lenovo DSP. Just just. Dragon Boards, and I think it would be same for the Zucaro uh, board. Uh, we stick to the upstream interfaces, but audio also has to so other hand, and we are using the in our hand, so it's yeah. <laughs> confirmed with uh, also. Same thing goes with the uh, we, so we use open graphics, so means I have to know So they're not using any uh, much of APIs it, or yeah, uh, much uh, of it also depends on uh, what kind of deviations from upstream with Angular and other software solutions. So like for intelligence, you could have your own uh, custom and then it doesn't matter what the upstream has. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, I, I appreciate that. No, I mean, so one of the things, for example, that I struggle with is where I get questions from customers like, okay, uh, what are the options I can put my fork in today? Well, okay, go look at how what they what they did in the, in the latest pixel. <laughs> That's yeah. usually how you're going to figure out what the options are and what they're doing with them. But they may still be very relevant to those devices. So, common conflicts I can sort of understand, and that I think the TK did from the kids. Yes. So, the the board can fix sort of board. Like, uh, options, for example, how images get generated and signed, and that sort of business, yeah. right? And you're not going to discover what those oh, things yeah, are yeah. unless you look at how they're doing a slice of the board ship. There's no, I mean, uh, no offense on Lenaro, but Lenaro doesn't actually necessarily use the full fledged list yeah. of options I mean, that are there because they, there's no purpose for them, right? Well, that's some time on uh, classify that. Okay, if I use this variable, is it useful for us or not? Yeah. So at some point we have done that analysis. So that's why we are using a minimal set of conflicts now. Because earlier uh, what we used to do the same thing. Yes, we just copy paste the pixel conflicts. But then we realized that over the time uh, those conflicts are not documented or missing yes. anywhere. That's right. So we started doing this. Okay, do I need this? If I don't enable this part, yeah. what does it do? Yeah. So we have done this. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. time ago, we always had this project to do click and click for developers. Yes. Yeah. 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 Long, long time ago. Well, it's also complexity. Somebody needs to support this. Yes. Click and click yes. Exactly. It's maybe easier for normal user to choose mm. because maybe you can explain it in better language what we want to choose and what flags are used. Yes. It's under the hood. Uh, but still, somebody needs to own this project. Yes. And um, mm. it's not probably not flexible enough. It's has a limited amount of options and it should be updated all the time when build team changes build swipe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the layering with the cake and fig was not great, but it was, I think, a good idea. <laughs> you know, still just to have something that was. Well, I can't remember who, who was the name of the gentleman that had uh, attended the LPC a couple of years back, uh, taking care of the bills to mention that, you know, there was, at least at that time, seemed to be some interest at some point of having some sort of configuration system. I mean, I think. 
it's sung, you know, <laughs> like I, so it is the build system, right? And so it has, it has a set of configs, but it would be nice if it was um, a way to enumerate the active ones versus the not, because right, I mean, right now, if you have something in your build config, and then in the next version of AOSP, it's not used anymore. It's not like you get a warning or something like that, no. that you've set a variable that's not used. <laughs> um, but like, that would be, that would be nice. But I think the idea was to kind of move it more into the build system, but I, I don't know where that is. So yeah. um, I think uh, Dan Williams and Colin Cross are the two folks who are good at answering that. Um, but from final user perspective, a simple example for 64 bit. When you have these two examples, you can take it and diverge because, for example, with all the respect to Cuttlefish, it's a little too complicated. Yeah. The days, it's, it's a big, uh, it should be much simpler for normal for, for user to. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, part of that complexity is that it, it has a lot more health coverage than the yeah. dashboards. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I, I actually would recommend folks to look at Cuttlefish because, you know, on a, on the dev boards, you know, a lot of us we don't have powerhouse, like they don't have, you know, like a lot of the optimizations that are expected on real devices. Um, and Cuttlefish does a really good job of creating sort of like fidelity to the, for testing. So I have a really stupid question for the guys. I mean, how do you decide which which of the targets on the build target product do you choose to start from for your recipe and advice? <laughs> How do you go with free run? Which ones do you want to start with? Or are you just like, mm, okay, we've been using that one for a long time, let's just continue using it. <laughs> and you, you don't have to answer it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to understand what's the thought process, right? So the question is, like, for example, under device, you know, the uh, Lenaro, Heike, or whatever, you know, you're going to start, you can have your own recipe, but you're basing off build target products, you know, whatever, a full x86 MK or yes. full MK or whatever it is. And, and the question is, how do you decide which one to start from? <laughs> this was, we start, we start with yeah, then yeah. We, So it's again the same thing. Like, do I need this MK5? Or do I don't need this MK5? So, so if you see like uh, Dragon Ball MK5, yeah. it's just full base. Yeah. And yeah. Then yeah. Then yeah. Then yeah. Then yeah. Because we don't have any stack. Okay. Right. So the same thing goes for the. I think it's all calculated. If I recall, because in as far as I know, there's like no documentation that says yeah. these MK files. Yeah, each one of these is for that. Yeah. You kind of like, like hmm, okay, I think it's that one. <laughs> yeah. In, in, if I recall, the, on the original Hikey, we were following some of the Nexus 10. I think because the idea is it was a tablet, and so it's like, okay, we're not going to have all of the peripherals. So it's, it's kind of the closest thing that the hardware kind of matched to. Um, but that, I think, is where we kind of got that initial set of. What... I do tend to use the Hunky 960 as my reference board. Maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so then I was, it, the device is like uh, that's getting on. The that has there at all. You can put it in Hikey 960, it definitely works. Yeah, it does. But we don't have any very close fixes, No, it, it, it deals with USB touch. So if you have a USB monitor that, or not a monitor, but yeah, so no, HDMI monitor, monitor USB touch. So. so there would be things that. Yeah, it's something you use in generic uh, USB class structure. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can come along with with uh, some funny SVI touch interface. So obviously, it's like the power how the brightness. The, you know, there's a couple of them that there just yeah. isn't support for because we don't have that. You don't care. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. We don't have a backlight. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> but we do have generic hand problems. Now we have Yeah, and that's true. Yeah. Right now have the haptics. Yeah. So that at least till Pixel 5, they were using LEDs as haptics with the interface. So with upstream, they're using the input interface. I mean, what yeah. we have a jailer did and uh, someone from SO mainline also did that. So, we are, so as I said earlier, we are using the upstream interfaces. Mm -hmm. So be it yeah. anything. Do uh, so you have anything else? we got about 10 minutes left. I also recently discovered the PC profile. Can you please take this PC that I'm 
and I'm very tempted to use my house is getting well. Currently, we have a tablet. Uh, maybe the business is done I'm not aware of that one, so let me get back to you. There's something which I want to try. Maybe it's like a backwards like IRS PC for me. It's like a person who do that. It's like, I don't need a tablet. Chrome OS ish. Yes, yeah. Windows is the same as You can get multiple Windows of OS. Hmm. Hmm. We had Don Shirley. I don't know. Oh, raise hand. All right. Go ahead, Lucas. Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, yeah, because the, I've been waiting for some slot. Uh, I have a question regarding the scheduling and the vendor hooks. Uh, you've mentioned yesterday that most of them, I think it was on a cloud, uh, Qualcomm uh, presentation, most of them, they were around uh, power management and probably scheduling. Uh, do you have maybe idea, guys, uh, we could validate how good the vendor solution is comparing to the mainline EIS? For instance, with, let's say you disable the vendor hooks and then you run some CTS test suite and gather the results from the device and compare with vendor hooks enabled and then automatically compare those those results. Would it be possible, something like that? Uh, I mean, I know we do comparisons with scheduler all the time uh, without any of our vendor hooks. I don't think we do CTS or VTS without vendor hooks. Um, yeah, I guess that's... Okay, so, so that would be some kind of a generic question then uh, to Google, because there is a, le a list of those vendor hooks uh, around the, the C groups, the, the hot path, and is there any plan to shrink the list? And maybe that would be kind of a, a approach to validate how good actually this implementation is comparing to the uh, mainline. that because I mean internally Qualcomm does validate you know do, do our features actually add something all the time uh, so I, I don't know if that's something Google necessarily wants to so back, yeah. I, 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 I think it's interesting I don't have anything <laughs> I guess to talk about but um, I don't know it sounds pretty interesting to me well, I can say that okay we are interested in this as well and we are looking yeah <laughs> So we have uh, a test suite for EAS. Uh, we run that um, periodically, mostly every month. It's called EAS integration. You can find the results on the web page. Um, we publish those results. Uh, there are some tests, uh, for instance, really simple how the scheduler behaves, like uh, a ramp up time or a task placement for known workloads. We know how they should behave. Uh, this might for instance, be uh, taken into account like uh, a subset of uh, CTS or VTS or whatever. Do, do you have the link to that that you can share in the chat? Oh, let me try, find, I can probably. You don't have to do it right the second, but it might be good. Okay, yeah, um, I, I, will, I will find that. Uh, if, if I failed in those few minutes, then I will send you an email yeah. or to, I, mean, I, I think it's an interesting idea. I definitely um, would like to talk about it further. Okay. Do you want to speak up for two minutes? So, uh, on Android Mainline, I think those numbers that Matthias uh, had in his talk on about the uh, technical debt talk yesterday, um, mm -hmm. we we try to remove as many vendor hooks as we can from Android Mainline, and uh, as they interfere with Greg's merges, he removes them, and uh, he won't pull them back in. So, like, if you have a vendor hook on Android Mainline for some reason, um, 
if it gets removed, it's up to you to add it back and, um, and resolve the issues um, that um, were caused whenever the, the upstream merge came in that broke it. Um, but we like um, really only take scheduler type hooks in the Android mainline. Anything else, we will tell you to push upstream. Um, and I think that's the reason why there's mainly only scheduler hooks in the Android mainline. If you go look at uh, something like 515, there are many other vendor hooks besides the scheduler in those branches. Um, I think one of the main reasons is because some vendors um, are trying to start developing and testing on Android mainline, and they requested for those hooks to be in there for their testing. OK. And um, I can say that we are looking into it on Pixel. And for example, like Pixel on mainline, uh, we don't have like vendor hooks enabled for, um, for the scheduler enabled. Um, for Pixel 6, or you mean in generic Android mainline? There's a, there's a branch for Android mainline um, on Pixel 6 in the public AO3 tree. But yeah. It's outdated right now because it's really hard to maintain um, because Android mainline is constantly changing. There is one on AOSP, I think it's on like 5.18, and hopefully we can update it, um, latest one, but it's not something that we're committed to, um, but it could be used as a reference. OK. Yeah, we use Pixel 6 for, for our validation as well, internally. Uh, but yeah, just I've been wondering if, if that would be considered on your site. Uh, to compare with the, the mainline version, because we actually, the mainline has some new improvements which probably won't be backported to those vendor uh, forks uh, of EAS. And, and that's something that, yeah. If it would be good to know if you are going to even uh, compare those two solutions on the devices. Our team does look into that. Every time Pixel does um, their phones, they are always like we're in like constant communication with them about what they're doing and how it compares upstream. But I don't know like how much of that ever gets released out. Okay. Okay. Because as as far as we are experimenting and, and comparing some of the problems they are solved uh, well or partially solved uh, in those implementations in the vendors but uh, they are actually the problems are different for instance uh, the problem is not in the scheduler uh, but in the idle governor and and then there are some workarounds in the hot path but those are not addressing the real problem the problem is somewhere else but it's 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 hard to convince someone to even try to uh, to take different approach. So, in my opinion, there there would be a nice to have some kind of a, a small force like the CTS, and that CTS would tell you that oh look, uh, we know how this should behave, and if you are doing something wrong and and then you don't pass that uh, validation, then your implementation is probably wrong. The, the problem is somewhere else. Yeah, I think uh, basically it comes down to having the data, knowing what is good and like what is expected, and then telling people like this is the benchmark that you need to meet. And, yes. Uh, if we could have that, I think that would be great. And okay. Now we're just not there. Yeah, the drawback for us, for instance, is that we we don't have a device and we can just recommend to have a look at some areas 
and uh, the test has to be uh, made on the device. Otherwise, yeah, it's it's a different environment. You know, it can be different topology of the CPUs. Um, but yeah, it, there there is no force to to uh, to do that. You know, it's it's like the vendor hooks is nice, <laughs> but on the other hand, uh, what I don't know how you convince people to get rid of the vendor hook and and be more close to mainline if you don't have any CTS to to that they can fail. I, I, I think the idea of formalizing the test so that it's something that could be considered to be used in CTS, I think is a good first step. I think the hard part mm -hmm. might be in trying to figure out what is, you know, when, when you say something is correct or not, um, what scheduling is probably a bit subjective. Um, but I think that's, if, if, if we can avoid those subjective areas, it might be, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah we, we can go through those. Uh, we have a dozen of those tests in, in the CAS integration and, some of them they are a bit more controversial, uh, but some of them they shouldn't be. Um, Do these require kind of the larger, what was it, Lisa or whatever the framework? Was? Yeah, we unfortunately use Lisa heavily, uh, and and then there is um, some need, for instance, for the RT app because we have the scenarios um, built based on that binary. <laughs> oh, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Someone objects. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, I mean, yeah, if there's a way to kind of, I don't know, um, simplify and kind of condense the test down so it's something that be in CTS, I don't, you know, something we didn't talk about. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's let's follow up on the email. Um, I, I'll send you some, some links. Yes, sir. Uh, also, maybe if those tests just return a score, let's say, then we could run the same test with vendor hooks and without vendor hooks, and whenever basically we see regression, we flag it as hey, maybe you shouldn't, or you should look into those vendor hooks. I don't yeah, know how, good point. Yeah. I don't know how easy it is to, to to come up with just one score, but yeah. Well. Oh. We might, uh, if there will be a real need, we can rewrite in a way that you will be happy. I think, uh, because currently it's yeah, it's heavily built on on this Lisa setup, but we might uh, consider some some other. I think. So maybe there could be a classes of vendor hooks which like can be uh, disabled and some yes. some of them can be disabled. They're at least independently controllable. We can <laughs> like flip off the scheduler stuff and see what happens and then flip off the window. Yeah. But wearing I mean, I, I don't know that doing C test is necessarily the right way to do it, but I just want to highlight from yeah. CTS perspective. I, 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 it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're at time. So thanks so much for joining everybody. Thank you. Uh, Thank you.